Hello, my name is Satyadi Sunkono. I'm the CEO of Satria Gameworks Private Limited, based here in Singapore. Um, I would like to give you a presentation about the background of our company. Uh, Satria Gameworks was founded back in uh, 2005, January. Uh, we started with a, a programming team from Paris, France. We have developed uh, a 3D engine technology game engine technology called KJAPI, which is now used to uh, make our first uh, game based on a game book series by author Joe Dever, Lone Wolf, Flat from the Dark. Uh, I hope you like our presentation and uh, sit back and enjoy yourself. Thank you. Hi, I'm Steve Riding. I'm Head of Studio. I've been um, in the games industry about 27 years now. Started off as a programmer, then a producer, then Director of External Development for Sony Psygnosis. Then I created the Traveller's Tales in Oxford and now I'm in Singapore. I'm Head of Studio, so basically I'm responsible for building the studio, making sure it runs on time and making all the correct decisions and producing a great game at the end of it because that's what it's all about. I mean, the team is taken from all around the world. It's almost a united nation of developers. We have people in Sweden, France, um, Romania, Indonesia, and obviously we have local talent. And that's a mix of designers, artists, animators, and programmers. Lone Wolf is based on the game books by Joe Diva. That's around 25 years old now. Um, I think there were a series of 28 of them and it's got a huge fan base. In total, they've sold around 9 million copies and it's just been re-released, been rewritten by Joe and was launched um, in paperback last week. And that's been very, very successful. The hardback version, which was released possibly a couple of months ago, is already in its third reprint. So it's still very, very popular, even though it's over 20 years old now. Um, currently, we've just finished our first playable demo, so we've spent the last six months in creating that some, a small segment of vertical section of the game that we can show the consumers, lone wolf fans, and possibly more important at this stage, publishers. Our next target is to take what we have, possibly give it even more polish, and then start talking to the publishers in a position of strength so they'll see what we've done, they'll see the potential, and that hopefully should be an easy deal to make. Um, the really difficult 
path of making any successful studio, and this is true not just in Singapore but the rest of the world, is finding talented people. Without talented people, as I probably mentioned before, all you're buying is equipment and software. It's the talent that makes the difference, that makes the game. So what we're doing, um, we're taking talented people with experience from overseas and melding that together in a framework to take local talent and grow that to create one cohesive studio. Um, part of doing any game is the funding. You can't do a game without money. Um, people have this romantic view that you can do a game by yourself and be self-indulgent, but that doesn't happen. These days it's a business. You need the money to do the game, otherwise it's not going to happen. We have a, a big advantage doing games in Singapore compared to games in the US, in Europe, and even in Japan. We have a cost advantage. I spoke to one of my friends today. His average headcount per year is 100,000 US dollars. We can probably do that cost about a quarter or a fifth to the same quality. I mean, the quality is everything. Uh, we made a decision to create our own technology. What we do, we have control of our technology. Our destiny is in our own hand. Uh, in terms of the game engine, there's probably two parts. There's the visible part, which is what you see on screen, the rendering. So that's the artist creates some art, and that goes in the tool chain, and you see that on the screen. Um, you, you need to have that in order to recreate the world in 3D. But perhaps, probably more importantly, is the content created in tools. Um, you can have the best engine in the world, but if it is difficult to uh, translate your content into gameplay, then that's not going to help. What you really need is an efficient method in real time of creating gameplay, testing it and testing it and testing it. What we have is a tool set that has allows us to place something in the game, test it instantly, and then see that whether that works or not. Alternatively, we've seen tool pipelines when that can take half an hour an hour, even two hours. And without that constant iteration, that's what makes a game great. The fact that you go again and again and again until it's perfect. The fact that we can create content really, really quickly. We can test things, we know they work, and we can continue polishing. And that's a great. We also believe that our engine is reasonably flexible in that we can do other genres. So people don't use our engine just to recreate what we've done but create different genres as well because of its flexibility. Um, so it's not like everybody's going to see a hundred different uh, lone wolves. They can do lots of different games using a bit of creativity. Um, looking at what we've achieved in the last few months, I think the prospects are very, very good. We've seen the feedback from the show, just looking online. We're getting phenomenal uh, reviews. Even though it's locally based, it's still a very good start. And I see the way we're developing as a company. They were almost moving vertically now. I think it's very exciting. And as we're possibly the indigenous company that has the most potential, people have seen our game compared to what everybody else is doing. People are going to flock to work for this company, and that's just going to increase the quality of the game we're doing. So I think we're going to be awesome.